While to the average person it might not look like much, the late music legend Patsy Cline bought this Tennessee property before her untimely passing and called it her dream home. Located in Goodlettsville, Patsy lived here for the last year of her life when her career was at its peak, and the success of her tour in Las Vegas also afforded her this red brick home. The home Patsy lived in the longest though was actually located in a working class area of Winchester, Virginia, and she stayed here from the ages of 16 to 21 returning to the abode from time to time until her singing career really kicked off in 1957. These days, her Winchester home is a historic property, which fans can get tickets to take a tour of should they find themselves in the neighborhood. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Patsy Klein was born Virginia Patterson Hensley before she changed her name and was born in Winchester, Virginia. This was where she also grew up and began her early career as well as the surrounding areas. She first stayed in Loudon in 1941 when she was 9 years old, living at 18 W Loudon Street in Round Hill, a house which apparently now looks like this. Patsy started singing at a very young age and at many local hotspots in the area. One of the first times was the six months she spent singing with a band at Roland Payne's Old John Marshall nightclub on Route 55. And she was about 16 years old then. Patsy made $10 each Saturday night for singing three or four old songs like All of Me, Blues in the Night, Melancholy Baby, and Stardust. A typical wage then was less than $10 a day and by then it was said that she had learned how to sell a song by singing it from the heart and she realized that the popular tunes were the ones people wanted. Well around this time Patsy had moved into a home in Winchester which would be the residence she lived at the longest but that's not saying much. By the time Patsy was 16 she had reportedly already moved 19 times. The tin roofed home which is now on the National Register of Historic Places and the Virginia Landmarks Register is where she lived from 1948 to 1953. And if you ever find yourself in the neighborhood, you can pay the place a visit. Located in a working class neighborhood in Winchester, Virginia, this modest home is where Patsy lived from ages 16 to 21 when she married Gerald Klein. When she moved from it, she would return to the family home intermittently afterwards. Patsy's mother Hilda Hensley moved into the small house with her three kids after separating from her husband and worked as a seamstress and at first she rented the house, later purchasing it. It's a simple two-story, three-bay building with a front porch and about a thousand square feet of space inside, built in a log cabin style with nearly all the logs being covered by walls. The main bedroom is located on the second level and all four members of Patsy's family slept here. The Patsy Klein historic house is made up of a parlor, a dining room, and a kitchen on the first floor, and the one large L-shaped room on the second. A tiny toilet only bathroom was added beneath the stairs off the parlor. It's definitely hard to imagine Patsy preparing for performances in this tiny space. The parlor is full of photos and memorabilia now as well as a white piano, record player and early TV set. While over in the dining room there's a salt and pepper shaker collection, Patsy's costumes, her mother's sewing machine and copies of her hand drawn stage costume designs. The outfits you'll see on display at the Patsy Klein house are western style getups which was what she liked at first. But after appearing on a big talent show a female producer suggested that she switch up her style a bit and then so she would come off as more sophisticated. Patsy shifted her style towards cocktail dresses and red lips. The room upstairs, which acted as a bedroom for Patsy, her mother, sister, and brother, was divided by curtains hanging from a clothesline to provide privacy between the beds. Money was always an issue for the family, so Patsy left school to work and had many jobs, her longest being at Gaunt's Drugstore as a popular waitress. Patsy was busy and determined, and even while working, she made time to perform. One of her favorite venues in the site of her debut was WINC Radio Station. At age 14, she she walked into the station and said that she wanted to sing on the station's 30 minute country music program and the producers decided to give the girl a chance. 
They were wowed and she was invited back. Charlie Dick, Patsy's second husband who had lived in Winchester, claimed that in the early 2000s, the house and the neighborhood hadn't changed much at all since Patsy lived there. The museum opened in 2011 and now it has reopened in the summer of 2022 after a two year closure. If you're interested in visiting, hours are 10 to 4 daily except closed Tuesdays and open at 1 p.m. on Sundays. Tours are given throughout the day and admission costs between $6 to $8 for adults, seniors, youth, and active military and children under 11 are free. After Patsy's 1957 breakthrough performance on the Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts show, she divorced her first husband, Klein, and later that same year, she married Charles Dick in the Winchester house, then relocating to Nashville, Tennessee, where they started a family. Just last year in 2021, what was Patsy Klein's dream home in Tennessee sold again for $540,000. And it even comes with a special historic sign in the yard stating this. Located on Nella Drive in Goodlettsville, Tennessee, Patsy lived here for the last year of her life while her career was at its peak. With the success of her touring in Las Vegas and her rise to fame with hit songs like Crazy, Walking After Midnight, and more, she was able to buy this lavish for its time house for $30,000 in 1962. Patsy lived in this red brick house located just north of Nashville with her husband Charles Dick before she would pass away in a tragic plane crash in 1963. The original listing for the home showed it had been restored to its original condition from 1965, including a special bar counter embellished with Patsy and Charlie. Patsy's one-time house spans 2,770 square feet of space with four bedrooms and three baths throughout, as well as spaces like a combined living and dining room and a wood-paneled eat-in kitchen. Elsewhere in the home, there's a cozy den with fire place as well as a laundry room, two car garage, and basement that's fit for entertaining. In fact, according to the most recent listing materials, the basement here was also used as an Airbnb for a short time. So it boasts its own kitchen, bathroom, laundry room, and living area with room for a bed as well as extra storage space. Looking at photos of the home, fans may recognize it from detailed reenactments in several movies about Patsy's life and career. The home was something that the singer considered a realization of one of her biggest lifetime goals. And it often served as a gathering place for some of country's top stars, including Klein's closest friend, Loretta Lynn, who named one of her daughters Patsy in her honor. Dottie West and June Carter Cash were among the other country music royalty who were visitors to the home which received a historical marker in January of 2019. While Klein only lived here for just under a year before her tragic death in 1963 as the result of a plane crash, her legacy lives on in the house as the listing details the quote unquote historical integrity of the home has been kept intact. Following Klein's death, her husband sold the home to singer Wilma Burgess, who firmly believed the historical house was haunted. She explained, You would be in an upstairs room and the toilet downstairs would flush by itself. Doors would open and close by themselves. Burgess moved out of the home a few years later, but I suppose we would have to ask the current owners about that instead. Another place where Patsy spent a lot of her time before her untimely death was in Las Vegas. The music legend performed at the Mint Las Vegas in downtown during November and December 1962, and she was the first major country singer to perform in Vegas, receiving stellar reviews. She had a return trip to Vegas planned in 1963, but sadly that March was when Patsy was killed in the tragic plane crash. Today, the Mint Casino site is Binion's Gambling Hall and Hotel. In the photos such as this one from Thanksgiving 1962, we can see Fremont Street in Vegas was decorated for Christmas season, and Patsy Cline is there in the corner. That was when she began a month-long run performing at the Mint. While Patsy Cline was taken from the world far too early, her legacy in music most definitely lives on. In the 1960s, Patsy became the first solo female singer to become a member of the Grand Ole Opry, and she was the first woman to be inducted in the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1970. 
1973. Klein's albums and CDs continue to sell platinum every year, and she has been on Billboard magazine's top country album list for the last 10 years. Her song Crazy continues to be the number one jukebox hit of all time. Since we looked at some of Patsy's most memorable houses, which are now considered historic places as well, that's going to conclude this house tour. But before we go, answer me this. If you got the chance to live in your favorite late star's former home and came to find it was haunted, would you live there still or would you move out? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments as well as what you liked about Patsy's homes. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in another house tour. Bye!